here's our agenda. We're going to go in order of departure. Linda, Charlie, Ken, Rebecca, and Charlie each teach a section of international policy and citizen advocacy. Um, have you started the tape yet? Wonderful. Hi, low-res students. Welcome. We're happy to share information with you about the field courses. We've got about 30 or 40 on-campus students in the room as well, and a bunch of wonderful faculty and staff to share information with you. Linda, why don't you start and tell us about Turkey? The disclaimer clause. When you think of all these good questions that you ask Ken and Charlie and Rebecca, that I forget to mention now, I get to, in the Q&A, answer them, okay? So, all right, Turkey. Um, it's the title of the course is Intercultural Communications in Practice. So that's what we're looking at is intercultural communication theory. Two credits, we will do um, two weeks in country. The themes that are important, intercultural communication, so it is homes, you'll have two different homestays. We do five days in Istanbul in the city, um, and then a few days homestay with a family in Istanbul area, and then we travel for four hours up into the mountains near Inigal, and we do a few days of homestay in a rural environment, and then come back to Turkey, and then we come home. That's the itinerary. Um, while we, other aspects of the course, we'll do some community service work. Um, last year, we did some work with nonprofit agencies that worked with youth. Um, when we were in the rural area, we went into the classrooms and worked with the same class for several days on English language, on using internet English for those that were in vocational areas, you know, that sort of, but the, the focus is on the community and the intercultural communication. Um, the, in order to get there, it, the trip itself is really part of a course. So because we will have low residency students that take this class as well as you all, that adds another dimension to it, which is kind of fun. Um, we do a class in October where we look at theories of intercultural communication, and you'll be working with the low res students on a project um, presenting a model. Then in November, we have a local professor who will come and give us the scoop on the politics and the secular versus Islam issues in Turkey. And that'll happen here on campus. And then in December, we do the pre-travel, what else do I have to think about before I go meeting. Then we do the trip. And then um, your assignment when we come back will be to respond to some guide questions that allow us to reflect on the connections of culture, theory, and practice. Okay? Um, costs. The program cost this. Um, on the sheet that you had available to you is the program cost, which covers the hotel stay, the guide, the um, transport, all that stuff, um, and meals that um, you'll have to pay for a couple of your lunches. You'll have to worry about your flight to Turkey. You'll have to worry about your transportation in the city. Um, and this, this is what I think is the top end. Last year, I put in the budget for $800, I think, eight to $900 for your flight, and most of the students ended up flying out of New York for 600, five to 600. So I did try to budget at the higher end because I hate surprises, and I'm assuming most of you are in the same situation I am in that regard. Um, what else haven't I told you that you need to know? I think. Low-res students, homestays, intercultural communication, community service, three classes before we go, costs. I know I'm 
going to forget something. I think I hit my five minutes. What did I Just miss? the assignments or papers? Is it just the one at the end? Any there's, there's the project that you do with the low res students, which can be a PowerPoint presentation. We have a Moodle site for the course. So you'll do a joint PowerPoint presentation or reading outline or something with them. So that, that way you get to know who they are as well. Um, and then you have two short guide questions that you write while you're there. Um, and then, you know, an introductory piece, a cultural autobiography piece, so that you get to know who each other are. Oh, the language. Um, I don't think they're offering Turkey, Turkish on campus this year with the Language and Culture Center, but what we found last year, we do a one-week optional on-campus language intensive in January before we travel. So if you're near Brattleboro and you want to come and join us, we'll do the language class here from the 7th to the 11th. We finish on a Friday and then we start class in Istanbul on Monday night. So what a lot of folks did was to travel over the weekend and then to get their sea legs under them while they were there in Istanbul and do some of the travel that they wanted to do. <coughs> before the class actually started. It's not required that you come, but it, it was kind of fun to practice and have that time together before we left. That's it for me. Thank you. Charlie. She's timing me. Yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> we got five minutes. I have five points. Oh, good. So it's going to kind of let me know how I'm doing on this as we go along. This is Liberia. The, the course is titled uh, Societal Change Post War. So anything that you learn there can be applicable in many other countries. And there's a lot of wars going on, civil wars. Um, three weeks, all in, in country. We're going to be going on the ground, so to speak, not parachuting in as foreigners as, as much as possible. Um, we will be, be staying, for example, at a guest house. Last, uh, no, a couple of years ago when I was there, I paid $10. They were asking 100 and some, something like that at hotels. So we're really going to be going on the ground, okay? Um, talking with Liberians, hearing from them in government, in civil society, and anybody else on the street that you want to talk with and hear what's going on there in Liberia. <coughs> One of the persons wrote to me just this morning that I'm in, in contact with. When I was there in 2009, he was a senator. He ran for, for president. He lost, but he's still very, very active. Um, and he emailed me, in fact, this morning, and this is no lie, it was this morning, talking about, uh, about this course being very necessary at this point in our history. I've spoken with the uh, head down in, Liber in uh, Washington, D.C. That's another foreign country to me. Uh, we teach down there some. Um, talking with the uh, head of the, the uh, media relations, the public relations of the Embassy of Liberia. When I told him about it the second time around, he said, that's really great, I'm really enthused, I want to be part of it. He is part of it, and he's going to be a part of it. He's got all kinds of contacts, previously working in, in the civil society and now working in, in government. Three minutes, Charlie. Okay. Well, point two. That was only point one. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the course is going to be visits with key persons going around. Some in a large group, some other in small groups doing your own research projects. Um, we will be also having a couple lectures we will be having, uh, like I said, research projects that uh, you'll do in small teams of two or three persons. The, uh, at the end, there's going to be a symposium at that, uh, at that event. What I want to do is to invite some of the persons that we've seen here in those three weeks, both from government and, and otherwise, uh, to hear what you've been learning. There's going to be opportunities to uh, interview with various radio media while you're there. They're always interested what people think about their country, etc., and what you're going to be, be doing. In terms of outcomes, what I would expect, 
is that just like I learned a lot the first time I was there in 2009, so I've been in many other countries, never Africa before, but what you're going to be doing is coming back with a lot of ideas that you can apply back here during your other spring courses. Here in the, the fall courses, I want you to think about a possible research projects that you want to do there. The, uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Yes. Okay. Then I'll go back and say something I didn't say much about. But, um, as I said, I want this very much linked to on-campus courses. Everybody's invited, um, probably especially SD, CT, and SLM students. You would have to take uh, one theory of practice, either in SD or in CT, to, to qualify. Is that a requirement then? That would be a requirement, yes. So there's still time for the registrar to go down and, and hopefully take one of those courses. Because I want it linked into what you're learning here, not just an excursion. So what are you learning? How does it play out in one particular case? Uh, in terms of cost, um, the total cost, I think, whatever it is there, um, I have put in $250 for, for vaccinations. That's on your own, but it might be, be covered by your health insurance. I put in even a cell phone, you know, West African cell phone, because that's the way they always communicate. So I put in everything I could really think of. So what you see is what's going to be the total, uh, total cost. One minute. La very last thing, good, I can do this in less. And that is, uh, what I would like to do is have a meeting tomorrow evening at 6.30. Uh, I don't know which room yet, but I'm going to find out soon, uh, hopefully right in this building, for any of you who have more questions or a lot more information. So that's it. In five minutes or less. All right. Good job. Thanks, Charlie. Yes. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hi, my name is Ken Williams. Um, this course is called Leadership, Community, and Coalition Building. We will be examining leadership frameworks and how we build community, how we do collaboration, because to solve many of the problems that we'll be looking at, which is around education, around the environment, and looking at around um, health HIV issues, have to be done in collaboration. It's just not possible to do it um, in isolation. So we're going to be looking at how these processes work. Um, the Caribbean um, has some very particular features. We'll be looking at Barbados, very different to Trinidad and Tobago. And one thing we want to look at is how policy plays out um, between countries like Barbados and Trinidad. Um, because, like for example, in Barbados, the school leaving, the compulsory school leaving age is who can guess? What's this compulsory school leaving age, you think? In Barbados? 21. Compulsory school leaving age. What do you think it is? 16. What is it in Trinidad and Tobago? It's 12 years old. Um, and right, but what's interesting is that when we were doing research there about four or five years ago, we talked to the Minister of Education who actually did not know that the actual school living age was 12 years old for those they did not know. I spoke also to the Minister of Finance, who's a good friend of mine in Trinidad and Tobago, and she did not know. She was surprised that the school living age was 12 years old. How does this play on the ground? It has implications on the ground because when you see 14-year-olds and not in school get involved in crime, you cannot force them to go to school. So how does policy translate into affecting development long term? Very powerful piece to begin to look at. So we will be spending most of our time in Barbados. Two weeks in Barbados, but we are not just going to be involved in lectures. We're going to be involved in the work actually in schools. So it means that we go into schools, we have to do some training before, and we go into the schools and we actually work with teachers and with principals and with students. One, there's some issues that are going on in the Caribbean. For example, students are flogged. Flogged? You know what flogging is? Yeah. All right. Two minutes. Yeah. Thank you. So students are flogged. How do we change a lot of this? What happened is that the 
principal is the only one who's allowed to flog now in some schools. But that has also created some problems. Lots of violence being set up by administration. So we're going to examine how to be able to change some of that. So that's one aspect looking at education. But we're also going to be looking at environment. I used to be, in my past life, I actually used to be head of the geography department in Barbados. A lot of my students actually, are actually our former students, actually are in charge of many different um, areas in environment all over Barbados. So the head of SIDERA, which is the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Relief um, Agency, she's a former student that I taught, and she will be looking at processes of collaboration, leadership frameworks, how it works in the environment, etc. Um, Barbados, the Caribbean actually, has one of the highest rates of HIV outside of Sub-Saharan Africa. We are trying to look at how they collaborate to solve that problem. They're moving pretty fast ahead, and there's some things that we can learn from them. So I'm hoping that um, we'll be in Barbados based, but we head to Trinidad and Tobago, which is a very different culture. Trinidad and Tobago has some issues that are just mind blowing. It makes your heart hurt when you look at some of these issues, but we will make sure and keep you safe. Um, we'll be functioning around friends of mine. I've lived in the Caribbean for quite a long time. So um, let's wrap up there. I think that's my cue. Uh, my time is up. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you and your questions. Rebecca. Since there's two of us, do we get 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good oh. afternoon, everyone. <laughs> my name is Rebecca, and um, I am going to be one of the um, instructors for the IPCA class, which is the International Policy and Citizen Advocacy which is the course that takes place in Washington, D.C. The section that I'm going to be teaching is in February during the Greeting Week, I guess it is, and the one that Charlie's teaching is in April during the Spring Break. Um, a little bit about this course. Um, we take a group of students down to D.C. to look at the um, advocacy process, the policy advocacy process. So the course itself, though each Charlie and I each teach a section that focuses on a kind of case study. I do human trafficking, and he's doing, what do you do this year? The, securing the rights of persons with disabilities. Um, so although we have a focus for all the organizations and meetings that we meet with, we bring it back every day to, okay, let's look at this from the perspective of policy advocacy and how, how does this impact the process. So for example, for the human trafficking class, we might go and meet with um, the State Department trafficking uh, persons department. We might go and meet with some NGOs that are working um, on this issue, like Human Rights Watch or Free the Slaves. Um, we'll meet with uh, Department of Labor, Department of Justice, anyone who kind of has a, a hand on the policy shaping and policy formation around this issue. Um, we're going to look at kind of the definition of the, of the issue all the way through to getting people involved and active on this issue. Um, the assignments for the course are a meeting with an uh, elected representative or embassy official, um, a paper or a presentation at the end of the course on one of the stages of the policy cycle that we look at. And then there's a final kind of reflection paper that you turn in at the end. So it's a one week, one credit, very intensive course. Um, Charlie, do you have anything to add? Yeah. It's Our DC, everything style. happens on time. None of this SIT time stuff. <laughs> 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 um, it's, it's very, uh, it's very well organized and well oiled machine. So um, if you're ready to do that, <laughs> was that um, attached to the email that was sent out about all the other, like, I, I guess I didn't see the Washington DC stuff in the email that was sent out, maybe I missed it. It's on there, yeah. Okay. yeah. It was titled IPCA, not Washington DC. Okay, thanks. Great. Um, shall we just move right into the administration of all of this and then save questions for the end? Does that sound okay? That's okay. I saw heads moving up and down, so Sharon Berry, for my, all students know Sharon because she's in charge of student billing, and Kathy Sylvester from the Registrar's Office, Hi, and Michelle Krenick from Financial Aid. Thank you guys. No problem. Um, we're just here to talk to you about the administrative side of the field courses because there always is something. There is an extra charge for each one of these courses. As you can see, it's been outlined on um, all of the courses. The, um, okay, sorry, I have to use my notes. Barbados program fee is $500. The Turkey program fee is $1,300. The Liberia program fee is $550.
And the DC courses are each $150. So the one in February is $150 and the one in April is $150. So this is over and above the tuition that you've already paid. This is due at the time of registration. Registration is going to happen the week of September 24th and end on September 27th. What registration is going to mean is that you'll be registered for the course in the order of which you come into the cashier's office and pay for the course. So you come in, you'll see Karen in the cashier's office, Jim or myself, tell any one of us what you want to sign up for and at that time be prepared to pay for it or prove that you're going to get additional financial aid to cover it. I'm not going to go into financial aid, Michelle's here to do that. But um, again, in order to register for the course, the course has to be paid for up front. Your name will go on a list. There are a limited number of spots in each one of these courses. Turkey has nine spots. All of the other courses have uh, Liberia and Barbados each have 15 spots. Then a wait list will happen. So if you come in after the course has been full, we'll put you on a wait list. And as if anybody drops out, you'll get registered in the order of the wait list. So the first nine people that come in and pay for Turkey, that tenth person is going to go on the wait list. Now, the number of people on these lists could change due to registration of the low red students. So if some of the low red students don't register for Turkey, there'll be extra spots. But we'll know that prior to the 24th, or we'll have a feeling of that prior to the 24th. The low red students are going to be told that they need to let us know on Friday the 21st. And then Sora is going to let my office know how many spots there are. But right now, there are only nine for Turkey, 15 for all the others. I'm not sure if IA does DC or not. If the IA low rest students? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Sure. So there's 15 for the DC programs as well. Sometimes the instructors can open up extra spaces. It just depends on what's happening. They're really good about letting us know. We'll do a final check-in with Sora and the group Friday so that we know exactly how many spots are available. If, if somebody drops off the list and you get in, I'm assuming the registrar's office will let you know that you've gotten in. To your SIT email, so keep an eye on your SIT email. But that's how it's going to work. So registration will happen 924 to 927. Our office hours don't start until 9 o'clock. So lining up at 7 o'clock in the morning is not going to do you any good. <laughs> Because we're not going to walk in until 8 and we're not going to open the doors till 9 because we need to get everything together. So if you want to come and start lining up at 8.30, that's fine. I don't suggest doing it at 7. It's really not going to do much good. It's starting to get cold in the morning, too. Yeah. You could turn it into a party, though. You could. You could. You can always bring food. It's still not going to get you in any quicker, but you know, we don't turn that away. Okay, so when the subject moves to food and parties, that's what I get to say. <laughs> I, these are all amazing opportunities. I don't know about you, but if it were up to me, I want to do them all. And I want to do them all on camera. <laughs> all right, so you have gotten a snippet of each of the four field course opportunities. Sharon has talked with you about cost. So, of course, the next step is financial aid. As you all know or should know, each of your financial aid eligibility is done individually. You're all in different circumstances. You all have different opportunities, different resources. So in this moment, we cannot talk about anyone's individual financial aid. I'm going to give you a, a quick overview. First of all, any additional financial aid eligibility will be added to your fall financial aid. Even though these experiences occur after January 1, if we're going to increase your aid eligibility, we need to do it now to enable you to access the money you need to pay your program fees, buy your tickets, your visas, etc. 
it will not be possible for there to be any advance on your spring financially. So as you're sitting here, if you're doing your math in your head and thinking, okay, I got my financial aid refund last Friday, but I spent it all, so I'll just kind of borrow ahead from my spring financial aid, that's not going to work. If we need to reevaluate your financial aid, we need to do that now. The additional financial aid that's available is in the form of federal student loans. Unfortunately, there are no additional SIT scholarship or grant opportunities for these experiences. And with all of that said, those of you here in the room and in the comfort of your own homes are going to fall into one of three categories. Either right now you have the money in your pocket or in your bank account that you need to pay your program fee and the additional costs associated with your program. I know that already over the last couple of weeks the financial aid staff has had the chance to have conversations with many of you as you've been planning ahead, anticipating these opportunities. So if you have both, your program fee and the additional expenses, you're good to go. You do not need to stop by the financial aid office and say, I think I'm good to go, am I good to go? I'm telling you, if you have it, you're all set. Of course, beyond that, you're all always welcome to stop by or contact us, preferably bringing chocolate. <laughs> Now, there are those of you, based on your own resources or your financial aid refund, who have the cash to pay the program fee, but you need some additional student loan money to cover airfare and the other expenses. <coughs> you will want to stop by and talk with the financial aid staff to figure out what steps need to be taken for you to access the additional money. In terms of registration, if you can pay that program fee, you're all set to line up, not before 7 a.m., not after 9 a.m., <laughs> whatever on Monday morning. And then there's the third group. Those of you who at the moment do not have the financial resources to pay the program fee or the additional expenses, and guess what? you are also going to want to come and see us. Your particular eligibility and the particular steps that you need to take for us to enable you to access that will depend on each of your own circumstances. And the financial aid staff are available to sit down and have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with you. Sora and I were writing on our chalkboards at the same time. She's much better at this than I am, but nonetheless, I'm kind of proud. The first day I put up here is September 18th, which is today, which is our information session, and I intentionally put that up here so that we can cross that off and all have accomplished at least one thing today. <laughs> Starting this afternoon and through the end of this week, if you have individual questions, you want to meet with us, talk about additional student loan eligibility, we will be um, meeting with students on a walk-in basis. So know that we expect to see you. You do not all need to immediately, from this session, go to the financial aid office. You're welcome to, that could turn into its own kind of party. But you do have several days to work through this and make sure that you've got time to chat with us. As Sharon mentioned, the 24th through the 27th is when you may sign up for your program choice. And then September 28th, the end of the day a week from this Friday, if you need to take additional steps to secure additional loan money, they all need to be completed 
by close of business next Friday. What will happen then is that the first part of that following week, anyone who has not paid for their program will have their name removed from that list and the next person on the wait list will be included. I, thank you. Sharon and I travel in a pack anytime we need to do presentations. I think primarily because she makes sure I don't forget anything. This is what she wanted to make sure that I mentioned to you. What we have put in place is this, because regardless of your financial circumstances at this moment, to the, the greatest extent possible, we want to enable all of you to have a fair shot at signing up for these opportunities. If there's financial aid that needs to be processed, but you've met with my staff and we've gone over that, what we will do is give you a little slip. It has your name on it. It will indicate the additional financial aid that you are eligible to receive. And on here is also a statement that you understand if you have not taken care of all of your steps by September 28th, you will go off the registration list. This is your ticket, okay? This is what you're going to take on the 24th when it's time to register because it's our way, financial aid's way of notifying student accounts that you have met with us and together we are doing what we need to do to enable you to access additional financial aid. Does, does everybody understand that? Because this is like bringing in cash. If you don't have this and you don't have money, you won't get put on the list. Okay? This is like the most important piece Everything that she says is important, but this is the most important piece for registration. So if you get this net to this week, you need to have it with you, hold it with you, bring it with you when you come to register the following week. How does this play out for low res? Over low res, the, it's over different. The phone? It's different. Okay. It's different. Sure. What the low residency students need to do is be in touch with the financial aid office, either by phone or email within the same time period. And we are prepared, happy to work with all of our students, whatever their particular situation is. Yep. Um, so, so, oh, sorry. Sorry. That's um, right. So um, when we come in, all we have to, all we have to actually have in our <coughs> at that point is the program fee, not the entire cost of the program. Or We do don't we want the entire cost of the program. We just want the actual program fee. So if that wasn't clear, I'm sorry. I just we just either want the 500, 550, 1300, or 150. But what I was going to ask is if we were planning to use some kind of personal fund for that, we don't, we don't have to like prove that we have that money, do we? Or we you just need like to bring us to check, cash, or credit card. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. So that crucial slip of paper, we get that after we meet with the financial aid office, and that's kind of our ticket to then bring to the registrar's office next. Bring, bring to the, the billing office. Bring to the billing office. <laughs> okay, and that's a great question. Let me circle back just a little bit now. Okay. If, from your own resources, you are prepared to pay the program fee, proceed right to student accounts on Monday the 24th. This slip is only required for those students who need additional financial aid additional student loan to participate in one of the field course placements. It's in lieu of cash, in lieu of your own funding, right? Uh, momentarily. Momentarily, of. right. <laughs> what this does, this is how we're communicating on your behalf with the student accounts office that you have additional financial aid in process. So, on Monday morning, if you can show up in student accounts and have cash or a check or a credit card, you do not need any kind of clearance from financial aid in advance. This is the bridge for those of you who need to work with the financial aid office to access some additional funding. Good? Yes, maybe? Yes, yeah, so a question. Yeah. 
We're not going to, so the only thing that SIT is going to bill you for is the program fee. Everything else is money out of your pocket. You have to buy your own airline ticket. You have to pay for certain meals. The program fee for Turkey, for example, is $1,300. And in that program fee, it includes some of your housing and some of your meals and other things like that. But it is broken down on each program how much it costs and what it's for. What you need to pay SIT when you register is just the program fee. So this piece of paper is important for the program fee. However, you may need extra money to cover the $2,750. So out of this $2,750, you need to be prepared to pay $1,300 when you come and stand in line. But that doesn't mean, that means you may have $1,300 right now to cover that, but you don't have all of this. So if you need more than the $1,300 to cover this $2,750, you need to go see financially. And then they'll work with you with this. If you don't have the $1,300 or you don't have any of this, you need to go see financially. Okay? Yeah? Yes. If you um, have, I'm sorry. Um, I just have a quick question. This might be able to be clarified on an individual basis. But if we receive the excess funds for our federal aid package, and it does meet that requirement, but in our minds we're budgeting for the next so many months, mm -hmm. and then we feel like we might want that additional money just to make sure everything else right. is covered. You Financially. Need... Okay. All right. And you can come in and pay the program fee, and then if you're still uncomfortable, go see the folks okay. in financial aid. I wasn't sure that just because we have the money doesn't mean that it's it's not allotted somewhere else. That's right. Mind. That's and right. So many yep. Months, so that's yep. yeah. um, So just to clarify, to register for the class, don't go to the registrar. You go directly to, to student accounts because you need to pay for the program. Right. And that's how we register. That's how you're going to register. Did you still have a question? 